when the reality hits you, sometimes it's got to slap us. But when the reality truly hits you, and you realize you've been lied to and deceived the majority of your life, you should be angry. Not at people, but what the unseen. When you begin to review all the things that the enemy has lied to you, see, as a man thinks, so he is. Those voices, all of our, everybody thinks, so many people think, well, that's just my thought. Well, that's not your thought. It's a voice of the enemy. It's a voice of the flesh. It's a voice of the soul. See, the voice of the spirit is totally different. And so many people don't understand the voice of the Spirit. And it's not that he speaks all the time. He impresses. See, so, so many times people have not received his impression because their soul isn't converted full enough. The soul must be converted, transformed. It must align with the Word of God. And as you begin to make what is unseen to become seen in all those days that we've lied, we've been lied to. Did you ever buy something you wish you didn't? Yeah. Amen. Did you ever do something you wish you didn't? Yeah. Everyone in this room a thousand times. Amen. Half of our life <laughs> till we got saved. Were you ever disappointed? Did you ever disappoint someone else? Were you ever offended? Did you ever offend someone else? Hello. Did you ever lie? Don't, don't raise your hands or anything like that, okay? Every one of us has done something stupid. And knowing it's hurt ourselves, hurt someone else, and offended God. Even when we didn't know God, there was something in us that said, you know what, that ain't right. But we did it anyways. Because we had no power or control. We were wimps in the spirit. Not strong in the power of Christ. Many people believed that there was a God, even believed in Jesus, but they didn't have power. Because they were never baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, or stayed connected. But when you finally get to that place and you realize, my gosh, I've been lied to so many times. I've been deceived so many times. There should be a righteous anger establishing in you where you want vindication. See, but the enemy wants to get you into a place where there's an area, yes, you take responsibility for agreeing and making the choice. Amen. And we all reap from those things. But there's still an area of who influenced you, what influenced you. What voice impressed you in that area? Every one of us has gotten to a point where we said we didn't want to do something anymore, but we still did it. And that voice will come back, that desire will come back, that temptation will come back and say, come on, just one more time, it'll be all right. You can do it on your own. Whatever it is, drugs, alcohol, pornography, gambling, whatever. But that voice is always enticing to promote us to associate with the presence of evil. That's what we call react. When you react to something, you're sowing in the flesh and you'll reap corruption. When you respond to something, you're responding according to the way of God. Like I said before, there's many nuclear reactor humans out there. Amen. Man, they just blow off at everything. Very prideful, arrogant, and so forth. But we should come to a place where when we finally realize that we've been lied to and deceived, there should be a righteous anger in you that reaches the level. And sometimes that level will change. To where you hate evil. Does everybody understand that? 
If you haven't reached a level where you hate evil, you're still dangerous to yourself and others. Because we should hate evil. We should hate the works of evil. It doesn't mean we hate people. Does everybody get it? People are deceived. <laughs> you know, many people say, well, you're so bad. You've lost your family. You've done this. You've done that. You've done whatever. You've lost everything. We're usually a good candidate to be born again. <laughs> and start over. That's the one thing. Even after you've come to Christ, you've been born one time, you can get born again. Why not? You get born again as many times as you want. But make sure you get right with God before you get born again. again. Before you choose to get born again, you're right with God before you die. But again, we should get to that place where, you know what, we hate evil. We don't want to compromise with it. We don't want to pet it anymore. We don't want to agree with it. We want to expose it and destroy it. Because we're to pursue our enemies and destroy them, and those that are demonic spirits. In Psalm 43, would you read it with me, verse 1? Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against a what? Ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the what? Oppression of who? Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not your children, not your boss, not your pastor, not anyone. The enemy, the unseen enemy. Does everybody get it? The powers of darkness, the influence. Verse 3, what does he ask? Oh, send out your light and your truth. And let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. That's his presence. Then I will go to the altar of God, to my God. I will exceedingly joy. And on the harp, I will praise you, O God, my God. Now, so when we gather together, we are praising him. We're clapping. Amen. Now, there's a time not to clap. But then there's the time to clap, because when you're clapping, you're shooing away presence of evil. That's called praise. That's how you enter, you block, you push out demonic powers of darkness. And then you surrender. You don't need to push out the darkness anymore. Amen? Now you're surrendering, bringing the light of Christ back in. And now you can get refreshed. If you keep doing this, you're going to push God out. Hello? Is everybody okay? Verse 5, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance in my God. This was a cry from an individual, a psalmist, most likely David, because he wrote most of these psalms, that he wanted vindication. He was being attacked for no reason that he could, he could tell. He wanted to be delivered from deceitfulness in an ungodly nation. How many of you know our country is ungodly right now? How many of you know the world is ungodly? I don't know, but things are turning around. This is where he's crying out. Let me tell you, God, there's so much cry going out to God right now. That there's praise and cry. Lord, vindicate us. Do something. Everybody's waiting for God's move. Well, let me tell you, he is moving. He's moving mightily. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13. So God does certain things when mankind refuses to follow. It says here, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. 
this is what's happening now. There's been enough people crying out for vindication and have turned and repented, repented for this land, sought the Lord. And he's saying, listen, I heard, and I'm doing something mightily. And he's going to do something mightily. It's happening right now. In Leviticus 23, verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feast of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it, and it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. So it's something to understand. Many of you have heard this already. There are feasts of the Lord. Many believers don't know about them. So they, ha they have no idea of times and sequences and things that are getting ready to happen. Everything revolves around the feast of the Lord. Everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. Amen. Now the Sabbath was a feast, a weekly feast. Its purpose of the Sabbath was so that mankind would recognize God once a week. But now you are born again. Jesus is the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath himself. So you don't have to wait for one day. In fact, it means rest. You and I rest in the Lord every single day. It's not a specific day anymore. That's that religious stuff that continues on. Does everybody understand it? We now know the Lord of the Sabbath. We're now in a relationship with him. So every day there should be a place where you are walking in him with rest. But we do set aside one day, and it didn't have to be Sunday. It could have been Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, any day. But because of the Roman calendar, they put Sunday as our Sabbath. But the Jewish Sabbath is Saturday. But again, it doesn't matter what day. We serve the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Not the day. If you begin to worship the day, well, then you're out of order. Amen. We worship the Lord, not the day. Is everybody okay? Then there is the full moons that they celebrate. Amen. And then there are the seven feasts of the Lord. And these seven feasts of the Lord were established and celebrated every year. Until Jesus would come to begin to fulfill them. Only Jesus, God in the flesh, came to fulfill the, sab the uh, feast of the Lord. Now I'm going to mention the feast of the Lord for some of you who may not know them. The first feast is the feast of Passover. If you remember Moses' flicks, Ten Commandments, things to that degree. When they put the blood on the lentil of the door, that was called Passover. The spirit of death came through. Anyone who didn't have the blood on them, on, on their door, the first child was taken. Amen. We're now we're covered by the blood. Jesus fulfilled that on the day that he was crucified. In fact, they, sh they killed a lamb at twilight, and Jesus died at twilight. The second feast is called the Feast of Unleaven. Again, that's, leaven means evil. When Jesus died, where did he go? Hell. Amen? He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the powers of darkness. That's called the Feast of Unleaven. The next feast is first fruits. That's when Jesus rose from the dead. When he rose from the dead, all of the people that followed Jesus during his time also rose from the dead with him. And they went into the cities a witness to everyone. Then there's the Feast of Pentecost. So after 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, Jesus poured out his spirit. That's when he said, 
hang out here, wait into the upper room until you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with tongues of fire. And that's in the book of Acts. That's why we speak in tongues. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a language to God, personal language to God. The devil doesn't understand it. And you won't understand it unless God gives you the interpretation associated with the gifts. These four feasts have been fulfilled by Jesus. Now, they still, Jews still celebrate them every year. They don't realize that Jesus fulfilled the first four feasts. Does everybody get it? They're still waiting for the Messiah to come. When he's come already. But he's coming back again. And then there's another feast called the Feast of Trumpets, which is right afterwards. And that feast is the Jewish feast for the new year. And that's on September 25th. It'll be 25th, 26th, 27th. And then there will be the Feast of Atonement. Is everybody okay? Now, seven is also associated with things of completeness. Leviticus 25, verse 8. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years. That means seven years. Amen? So there's seven years he's counting. For yourself, seven times seven years. And the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you a 49 years total. Then you shall... Cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month on a day of atonement. Now, atonement follows Feast of Trumps, okay, trumpets. And you shall make the uh, trumpet to sound through all of your land. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty or freedom throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It is... It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. Now, listen. There are certain sequences where the jubilee recycles. And the jubilee is recycled in all this past year. That's why 50 years ago, the abortion law was put into effect. Now it's no longer. Does everybody get it? Because it's being restored. Fifty years ago, President Nixon nullified gold and silver to back up our dollar. Now look at the battle over gold and silver. Because gold and silver, the Lord says, is mine. That's going to be restored. All of this other stuff where there are corrupt governments that have been printing their own money with no, no backing of gold and silver is going to come to an end. Now, the end of Jubilee is on the Feast of Trumpets, which is September 25th. So you're going to see a lot of things begin to happen next month. God is preparing us for all these things. And every bank that has a, a, a now think about this. If a bank has a loan out, right? Let's say you have a loan, a mortgage. And the bank cannot back your mortgage that lent you the money. With gold, it's nullified. This is what we're coming to. It's called Jubilee. Any loan that a bank can't back up with gold that anyone has will be removed. I'm not telling you to go out and get loans, all right? Hallelujah. So everything is going to be returned because it is the Sabbath. I mean, it is the Jubilee. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Now, again, there's, there's what we call the Roman calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and then the Jewish calendar. Now, in, in our calendar, we know that this is 2022. But in the Hebrew or Jewish calendar, it's uh, 5782, coming to 5783 next month. Now, the, everything in the Jewish calendar, everything of Jewish and Hebrew words, every letter has a number and a meaning. Not like ours. A don't mean nothing, except for alpha, we call it, you know. 
But every letter in the Hebrew calendar or in the Hebrew language is a specific meaning with a number. And so we've got 5782. Five is a representation of God's plan of grace. Goodness toward humanity. Seven is a number of completion, perfection, physically and spiritually. Eight is a number of new beginnings. Amen? In other words, new order or creation. Two is a witness, now listen to this, of division and unity. Two is a witness of division and unity. Two is a witness of division and unity. Here we have division and do we have unity? Where there's places being divided, there's now places being reunited. Amen? So, that's where we are right now in the 5782. And that year, which we're in right now, is considered called the roar of the lion. Because things are being exposed. You know, I, we, I forgot what year it was a couple of years ago. The Lord gave me a word for the year. It was called exposure. And he said, I am going to explode and explo exposure of all wickedness like never seen before. And he showed me three whirlwinds that were coming. And he said, the first whirlwind, man, I saw the first whirlwind come. And it was ripping off tops of houses like a sardine can. It was exposing all wicked areas all over the world. And he says, I'm exposing everything. Has that been happening? The second whirlwind that came, and while the first whirlwind was still going, the second one comes. And that one's dropping provision, prosperity, strategy. It's going to come in 5783 after starting this September like never before. And then the third whirlwind came and removed the body of Christ from the earth and brought them home. So we are in the first and second whirlwind constantly right now. And, the, and they will continue exposure and provision, exposure and provision and prosperity. Things are going to be shifting. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Three, so when, and, and 57, we just talked about 5782. Now 5783, the number three is associated with the fullness and the trinity. Um, the fullness and, of course, associated with the trinity involvement. The fullness in the Trinity involvement. In other words, it's going to be like awesome. <laughs> Remember, Jesus prayed three times before going to the cross. Fulfillment. Amen. When Jesus was transfigured, who showed up? There was three, two witnesses in Jesus. That's associated with rapture. The removal of the church. Jesus is known as the what? Way, truth, and life. So Jesus came to fulfill. Amen. But it's the Trinity involvement in 5783, which is going to start September 25th. September 25th. Now, three days after September 25th, I think it's going to, uh, three or four days after, is the Feast of Atonement, which... Uh, Jubilee started on atonement and will end on atonement because it's, we call it the Feast of the Lord, but three days after the, I mean, the trumpets, Feast of the Trumpets, but actually three days after that is atonement. And that will end Jubilee. But then it's going to be an explosive. We're going to begin to see the early and latter rain. All kinds of things are going to start to happen. And there's other things I'm going to share with you in a minute. Is everybody okay? Go to Joel chapter 3. One. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. Have the Jews been going home for years? Yeah. 
Yeah. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyra and Sidon and all the coast of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into temples, my prized possessions, also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them, and I will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, and assemble and come all of you nations and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up from the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full and the vats overflowing. For their wickedness is great. Have we ever seen such wickedness as we do now? Multitude, multitudes in the valley of what? Decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark. The stars will diminish their brightness. And the Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Valley of decision. We are entering a time. And after, in this coming year, where God is going to begin to cut veils open of the unseen wickedness, and people are going to see more things they've ever, never seen before. There'll be a new perception of the deep state evilness. They will, God will expose the sphere of influence of the wickedness. He's saying it's time to get your houses in order in your life. So that, he said, my people can reclaim their position. So as we go through this next coming year, starting in September, it's a time to recognize. It's a time to repent. It's a time to turn away. It's a time to get your life together. Because if you don't, you will enter into a judgment for one whole year in, in 5784. That's why it's called the Valley of Decision. No matter what you do, it won't work. Does everybody understand that? It will, 5784 will be called the year of consequence. Why? Because people had an opportunity to get to have a whole year to get their houses in order, their life in order. If they refuse not, they will have a whole year of consequent of judgment of God. Is everybody okay? That's in 5784. But we're entering 5783. Things that are going to happen in 5783 that is unheard of. There'll be cosmic signs. There'll be gravity shifts. Many who become comfortable with disorder which is out of God's order, will be great shifts. God is causing people to get in order. Things are shaking. There'll be great shifts of weather coming. And I'm going to show you. Go to Matthew 24.
tell you, if you're right with God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Nothing. You'll be blessed, prosperous, victorious, favor the Lord. But if you're not right, God have mercy. Anybody want to go through a whole year of consequences? No. You'd have to be blunt, dumb, and stupid if you want to do that. But some people are, will because they're just not willing to give up. You know, when God offers a new life, you better take it. Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's speak it. Now, as Jesus said on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, no one does what? Deceive you again, again, and again. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. In other words, many will come saying, I am a Christian, and deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Is that happening? See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. That's a representation of ethnic group. Now you got Black Lives Matter, you got Planned Parenthood, you got all of these other groups that are just causing division. They're really not promoting anyone or trying to help anyone. They're just trying to cause division. And the kingdom against kingdom, now those are uh, regimes. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. Is that happening? Amen. And all these are the beginning of what? Sorrows. We are truly in the beginning of sorrows. Almost done with them. But they will... And what will happen is you and I will be blessed because of the, we are in the kingdom. But many of the world will fall into sorrows. Because the people are going to fall into sorrows without Jesus. Does everybody understand it? Now, so you got the beginning of sorrows. The next thing that takes place is called tribulation, which will be three and a half years. And the next thing after that will be great tribulation. And we should not be here for that. And that's where God allows the powers of darkness to take over the earth for three and a half years. You don't want to be here for that. Amen? Go to John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that they may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you is the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. I want you to know that we're entering a year where God is going to say, ask what you want. Does everybody understand? It may not like seem it at first. I told you, I think I already shared with you already, I was fellowshipping with the Lord, and the Lord said to me, Guy, ask me to give you the faith that reaches the level where he says yes. I said, Lord, give me the faith that reaches the level you say yes. Let me tell you, everything changed that whole week. It's, it's still continuing. It's almost, you know, he says, I'll answer you before you even ask. He knows exactly everything. He wants you to get in line. He wants you 
to be his sons and daughters more than anything. He's not asking you to do anything but cooperate. That's all he wants. But see, religion will try and push all kinds of stuff on you. We're not religious, we're free. Amen? There's a difference. We want to be warriors and spiritually warfare and the spirit to kick butt, call destructive fire down on the powers of darkness and rescue those who have been taken captive by the deception of the powers of darkness. That should be a desire in you after a period of time. Amen? So things are totally happening quickly. He will answer before we ask <laughs> here in the near future. It's getting ready to happen. But you got to stay in line and focused. Be careful of distractions. Hebrews 12, verse 25. You know, when I first started this journey, It was a little difficult in the area because you're stepping into a whole nother reality. A reality that you never knew before. You might have heard about it, that you might have spoke about it, you might have even touched it. But to live it is a totally different thing. See, so many people have one foot in false reality and one foot in true reality. Anybody ever say to you, man, get real? Amen. You can't get real in a false reality. And that's what the devil plays. He pictures a false reality. TV promotes a false reality. Artificial intelligence promotes a false reality. Music will promote a false reality. That's what the ploy of the enemy is to, is to promote a false reality so you never reach the true reality of what's going on. You have to fight for that arena. You have to shed the old reality so you can enter a new reality. And that takes changing of thoughts, an exchange of deceptive thoughts for truth thoughts. Amen? And Hebrews 12, 25, is everybody there? Oh, happy days. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth much more, Shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Who's he talking about? Jesus. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Is the earth shaken? The powers of darkness are being shaken. Everything is being shaken. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain and be blessed. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Shaking. One of the things I've shared before is compromise is one of the greatest enemies that has infiltrated the body of Christ. Many will be removed and miss the opportunity because of the, the, the restraints of the flesh have been loosened, lack of revelation. There are restraints of the flesh and of the tongue. Some people just can't keep their mouth shut. They got to speak every opinion and everything they feel. They need to just tie it into a bow. If you don't have dominion over your tongue, you sure don't have dominion over the powers of darkness, and they know that. It's Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Quit petting them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. 
For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? The days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And man, awake from, awake from lukewarmness and compromise. Get connected. He says, get connected. This is what the Spirit said to me. Get connected to my house, my presence, my word, my name, my promises, and my love. And I'll repeat it. Get connected to my house, my presence, my words, my name, my promises, and my love. You know, it's amazing how he said the first one was my house. Because people have forsaken to assemble so much. 1 Peter 4.12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning in a fiery trial, which is to try you, test you, challenge you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory in God rests upon you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone could suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory, be, glorify God in this matter. Verse 17, for the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God. Now, if righteousness is is scarcely saved, if, if a righteous is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. So where does judgment begin? In the house of God. It starts in God's house before it goes to the world. And everything God chooses to judge the world, it comes in the house first. James 5, verse 7. How many of y'all want to be vindicated? You get right with God and you got it. Stay there. Vindication will come. Remember, we're entering the year of vindication. Hallelujah. 5-7, is everybody there? Praise God. James 5-7. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Waiting patiently. It's called endurance. For until it receives the early and what? Latter rain. We will be seeing the early and latter rain begin in this coming year. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another. Brethren, lest you be condemned, behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. What did the Lord do with Job? Doubled everything. Amen. He doubled everything. Everything Job lost. But what did Job not do? He didn't curse God. He didn't curse God. He said, Lord, I came in this world with nothing. I'm leaving with nothing. If I lose it all, I mean, he lost his family. He lost everything. He was the wealthiest man in the world and lost it all. And God rewarded him twice the amount. Oh, if we could just hold on like Job did. Go to James 3, 13.
who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. They got all these think tanks around, you know, all these political think tanks, governmental think tanks. That's all that's walking in those tanks is demons. The voice of the stranger. They think they're so smart and so, man, my phone is so, I got a phone called smart. It's so stupid. It's ridiculous. Misinterprets everything I say. And it sends a message out. Then I got to repent for what it sent. <laughs> Check your message. <laughs> Hallelujah. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. You know, we need to thank God we're in Florida. We got a governor that's protecting his people. I don't know if you know or, know or not, but I mean, things have gotten so crazy in Washington, it's ridiculous. They just hired 87,000 IRS soldiers. And the IRS doesn't even exist. I'm not going to go into that all that now. Because they're trying to destroy as many small businesses. Any one cor corporation that's under $200,000 a year or any business they're going to go after and double the taxes. And they're going to come and collect it. And the government and our government governor said, you ain't coming in this state. Your agents will not be allowed in this state. We will arrest them if they come. They have to be qualified for certain all kinds of have licensings and whatever. He's going to make it very difficult for them. Because he's a believer. He knows the truth. Amen? Thank God. The Bible says, listen to the prophets. And nothing happens unless it comes through the prophets first. Proverbs 9. Training for reigning. These are not Bible studies. These are training sessions for warriors, preparing for what's getting ready to happen. It's a manual to fight. It's truth. Jesus was not a wimp. Wait till he returns. People are going to freak out. Proverbs 9, verse 10. Would you speak it with me? The fear of the Lord is the what? Beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be what? Multiply it and years of life will be what? Added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you, are, if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Wisdom from God. Amen. I'm going to close up Romans 8. 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from what? The bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. See, all of this is going to change soon. All of this corruption is going to be turned into the hands of the righteous. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Those birth pangs are called the beginning of sorrows. 
Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hopeful. Why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, or what we call endurance. All creation will be delivered into the freedom of the children of God. It's happening. It's beginning September 25th. Is everybody okay? 57, 83 to 84. It's a year of vindication and time of decision. We're going to see all kinds of things happen. You're going to see corporations that were exposed that are no longer going to exist because they've been involved in human trafficking, child molestation. Large corporations will lose all their assets. I'm waiting for Disney to come down big time because they're the most perverse location you could be associated with. Evil corporate uh, organization. Evil. They've been doing it for years. And many, many. It's in, in other words, po the political arena, uh, the po politicians no longer represent the people, they represent corporations, which are influenced by the demonic rule and satanic kingdom. But it's all coming to an end for, t for a period of time. Doesn't mean it's going to be totally removed. We'll still have to battle. We'll have victory in favor. And I really believe that in this period of time that's coming, the Jews are going to see the body of Christ being blessed. And it's going to cause them to come to jealousy so that that country and those people can be saved. Everybody get it? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. We ask that you, are what you have released a prophetic insight tonight and be placed into our spirit and brought to remembrance and protected that it not be stolen. We give you glory, honor, and praise for your release tonight in preparation. We love you and we thank you. And to you be all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.